Hi, welcome to Wholeheartedly for the Lord Bible Journaling with Sherry. If this is your first time here, welcome and thank you for stopping by this channel. And then those of you who have been faithful watchers of the video, thank you so much for coming back and watching this channel. This is Try It Tuesday. And what Try It Tuesday is, is a personal challenge that I've taken upon myself to do YouTube videos of people who I admire and who I've seen do things, mainly things like watercolor, watercolors and um, certain types of drawings that I'm, I'm doing freehand based on their video because they make it look so simple and so easy and they're so easy to follow. I always say to myself, now I wonder if that would work for me. And I've tried other videos before I started posting these videos in my Bibles and they turned out okay. So I just want to encourage you that when you see processes of people's videos and it looks easy, just accept the challenge and try it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Because it really is God first, worshiping him first through his word and then adding these elements to it just to... His word is already beautiful, so I don't want to say to beautify his word, but to, to make the page come alive with visual. How about that? For lack of a better word. So I saw Scribbling Grace's video, and she also has an Etsy shop, which I love her her uh, products in the Etsy shop. So you can stop over there, and her products are very affordable. She did a video on giving thanks because it was coming up to the week of Thanksgiving, and I said, why not try this? And it seems simple enough, so I am going to give it a try. Now, sometimes, like she has, I cannot ever pronounce this water paint, but it's Tombi something. I think I may invest in those because they have really great pigment, really vibrant colors. I don't have that type of paint, so I've been using my cheap watercolor paint by Ohuhu. I'm also using my acrylic blocks because... The difference between acrylic blocks and watercolor is that acrylic blocks are permanent pigment, whereas the watercolor, once water hits it again, it reactivates. And sometimes uh, watercolor doesn't give as much of a deep pigment as I need. So I'm adding, you will see me mix like the acrylic blocks with the watercolor. And you may even, you will see me use acrylic paint as well, just to add a little bit more depth to try to match her coloring. So if you don't have the exact products that someone use, use what you have at home and mix it up and try to do the best with what you have. And that's what I've done. So I hope you're blessed by the video and I hope you will give it a try. And Scribbling Grace, thanks again. Sandy Allnuck, uh, Scribbling Grace, there are so many people who do these videos with watercolor and they just make it seem so easy. So I'm just diving in. I'm going to try it. Monica Bauer, she has principles and, and tutorials that I'm going to try hers as well. And anybody else that I come across that I think I can try, I'm just going to give it a whirl because I want to do different things in my Bibles. And I love to use stickers and I love to use washi tape and those things. But then sometimes I just want watercolor paint on my page and just... Do it like that, the whole page. So I hope you're blessed. And remember, if I can Bible journal, so can you. And I hope you'll give Scribbling Grace a try. Okay, now the process begins. So Scribbling Blades, I, could, I couldn't hear her name. I don't want to call her name. I think she said Jennifer, but so I'm just going to say Scribbling Grace. What she did is she's, she's taking her, her water brush and she's making circles loose she said to keep it loose because it's abstract and flowing and that's what I had to get out of my mind don't be so definite Sherry sometimes I can be too controlling so to speak and I need to be free so you make those um oval like circles simple just freehand whatever how and however it turns out it's fine and then once you do that you just take some more of your watercolor and you just make some random lines um going out because you're making sunflowers so that's all she's doing and it's pretty easy, so you just do random, trying to fill up the page, so to speak. And she did a little piece in the corner. You want to keep the center open because you're going to fill that with color. So you do the yellow, and then once that, as that's drying, and I didn't have my heat tool with me, so I couldn't dry as I went along. So right now, I'm just adding down the green as she's doing. And what I had to do was I had to use my acrylic blocks and I used a little bit of brown because I needed the black, I'm sorry, I needed the green to look a little deeper to match hers. So a little brown made it a little bit more muddier and that's the color, that's what I was looking um, to do. So 
again, you work with what you have and you try to make it and blend it as best as you can. So as you can see, I'm watching her. You're watching me as I watch her and I'm just trying to mimic what she does. And you never mimic exactly the way a person does it because they're the originator of it. They did it. So you can just do it the best way that you can. And that's it. And I've really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the process and giving thanks to the Lord and just I enjoyed the art of it and it was really really beautiful and what way to give thanks to the Lord with bright sunflowers it just looks happy so again I'm just continuing adding the green and now what she's doing is in the flower the petals so to speak she's adding a little bit of like a burnt orange in between to add more a realistic feel to the sunflower so and that's what I'm trying to mimic as well Again, you never do it exactly as the artist who's actually doing it, but just to try it, it's, it was really great just to do it. And I'm just like, wow, Lord, thank you. Sometimes you just have to allow yourself to accept challenges, you know, and I'm always encouraging my son to go beyond what you can do. Challenge yourself. Don't do don't take the easy way out. So I'm, this is a new thing for me and I'm really enjoying the process. So as you can see right here, I'm adding some acrylic. I think that's the orange one. Nope, that was the green acrylic because again, I'm trying to get that green the same way as Scribbling Grace's green. And with acrylic, I'm trying to keep it loose because, you know, acrylic paint is really opaque and thick. So I have to be really, really careful because when it dries, it's going to dry just like that. So I have to try to loosen it up. And I noticed that I'm starting to get paint on the other side of the paper. So what you want to do is sometimes just get a piece of typing paper and just cover that area so that you don't hit the other side of the page, which I am so totally guilty of. So here's where my problem begins to occur. And it, at the end, I think it turned out okay. But the center of the flowers, she used, I, I was, I'm guessing it's like a brown. She did mention using purple. So I think it's like a purple. I really couldn't see it. And I, so I didn't remember. So I used like brown and green and a touch of purple. And I just really struggled with how it was looking and I made a mistake and I, I colored in the the sunflower the oval too much I made it too complete and she left some white areas open so uh, I'm thinking that I really should have just went back in and maybe got some white paint and paint over it but I just didn't want to mess it up so I did the best I could and I, I wish I would have been a little bit better with coloring the inside of that particular circle but it's okay you live and you learn the next time I do it I'm going to do it just like that and leave some white space because I think it looks realistic and I just look thinks it look real artsy and abstract that's what I wanted to say brush pen the big one and to try to lift up some of the color and also if you use either a baby wipe or a napkin or a paper towel you can also dab up some of the color So Scribbling Grace, she has tutorials on calligraphy. I'm not good at script or anything like that. So I just, she wrote Give Thanks to the Lord in her calligraphy type style. I couldn't do that. So I just penned it myself. And I used my distressed, my Tim Holtz distress pen because I didn't have a, a black pen. And it kind of, I guess because part of the page was still wet, you see the TH for thanks. It kind of like smeared a little bit. But again, 
I enjoyed the process and I just wanted to just do the art of her page and I was just so blessed and so grateful that it came out fairly okay and again I would definitely try this again on more than one type of Bible page and it's just really a great technique and something different to learn to do so I, again I hope you'll give it a try and be blessed and thanks for watching and if I can Bible journal as I said in the beginning and I always say you can too